Hello, my name is Juan Scott, and today we're going to show you how to export a 3MF from Fusion 360 with metadata. Now, this design was created in Fusion 360 using the Automate modeling tool, which is kind of like topology optimization except without the physics. It's a fun way to get some organic shapes. So now we're going to go to the Manufacture tab and see it's going to bring up a sort of a build plate, looking at sort of sort of additive manufacturing sort of template. Uh, we're going to go in. This is just the default setup. We're going to go into Actions and export the 3MF scene. Now, we don't have any support structures or data about the machines required. We're going to gather the metadata about the design itself. So the title, the designer slash author, a description of the part, along with any copyright information, license terms, and the creation date can be added as metadata. Now. Uh, if we use like an old STL file, none of the information is available for tracking or copyright or for retaining IP, so it's a handy thing to have it in a 3MF file. Okay, now that's shown up in our folder. You can see the file size is just over 2 megabytes. Now we're going to go back to the design stage and export this just as a mesh from the design, so you can see the difference in what we get from this. So if we export, uh, save as a mesh and as a 3MF with our uh, high refinement. Um, add the file name, save it locally, and we're just going to use that to compare what you get as far as metadata and the size of the file. Now you can see the file size is pretty much the same with the two, one with metadata, one without. And now we're going to just go and save it also as an STL file, both as binary and ASCII, so you can see the difference in file size. Now the mesh is theoretically the same, it's just the way it's described is more efficient in the 3MF file. So let's save that as, an, as a binary STL. You can see it's three times the size, and now once we do ASCII, you can see that blow up completely. So if you must use STL, make it binary. Otherwise, it's more efficient to use a 3MF file. Okay, so now we can compare the 3MF file with metadata along with the STL files and see the difference in size. Uh, pretty big difference with ASCII and the, and the binary and the 3MF. Okay, so now we're going to un um, basically unzip this to check out what's inside of this archive. We extra extract it here and we have an the content XML, we don't need to worry about that. If you look in the folder with the 3D file, that's where you'll see the geometry is stored. And if we right click and open that with a text edit notepad, you can see the metadata which has been uh, captured there from the design tool Fusion 360. Now, if we looked at the file coming straight out of the design uh, canvas of Fusion 360, Again, we're going to go and basically unzip it because the 3MF file captures all the data around that part. And we're going to extract it into its own folder so we can easily find what's going on there. And again, we go into the folder with 3D and check out that with a notepad app. And see, we have some more information than an STL file, but we don't have the metadata that we had, had embedded in the manufacturing tab of Fusion 360. Now, if we look at the ASCII STL file in Notepad, really nothing there except the triangles. Triangles are great and all, but uh, we can add a little bit more at one third the size. Well, even less. In closing, uh, you can see how much smaller the 3MF file is with additional information, so you might as well start just capturing that data now so it's there for the future. Um, any information about the projects, whatever you need to do, can be stored in the 3MF file. Thank you.